The Blue Ribbon Study Panel on Biodefense is a panel of former high-ranking government officials and academic experts that analyzes the United States' defense capabilities against biological threats. According to BRSPB's mission statement, the organization was formed to provide for a comprehensive assessment of the state of U.S. biodefense efforts, and to issue recommendations that will foster change." BRSPB is supported by donor organizations. Hudson Institute serves as the panel's fiscal sponsor. Current donors include Open Philanthropy. Panel members, staff, and ex officios The BRSPB is co chaired by former Senator Joe Lieberman and former Governor Tom Ridge. Sources Background <inaudible> 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 Between 2001 and 2014, the U.S. spent around $80 billion on biodefense. Beginning in fall 2014, the BRSPB conducted meetings, interviews, and conducting research. It studied the 2001 anthrax attacks and each biodefense program enacted under Presidents Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Barack Obama. In October 2015, BRSPB submitted its recommendations to Congress in the form of a report, A National Blueprint for Biodefense Leadership and Major Reform Needed to Optimize Efforts. The conclusion was that the United States was not prepared to respond to a biological weapon attack. As for the cause of the problem, the report said, simply put, the nation does not afford the biological threat the same level of attention as it does other threats. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> National Blueprint for Biodefense. BRSPB conducted a year-long study of how the U.S. should address biological threats. The study covered human-generated terrorist and accidental and naturally occurring biological threats. The study culminated in a report to the public and Congress released on October 28, 2015. The group's report was titled A National Blueprint for Biodefense. The report described threats posed by the Islamic State, as well as, "...mishandling of lethal biological agents by the U.S. government," as reasons for making biodefense preparedness a higher national priority. BRSPB's final report had 33 recommendations and over 80 specific items associated with those recommendations. The report proposes congressional oversight hearings on the following list of issues Major threats, Animal disease reporting, Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority, Biodefense Strategy Biosurveillance Budgeting Cyber vulnerabilities to the life sciences industry Food supply protection and response Global health response Medical countermeasures innovation Military-civilian biodefense collaboration Origin of active pharmaceutical ingredients PHEMCE coordination of MCM efforts Select Agent Program Vulnerable Populations On September 18, 2018, President Donald Trump released the 2018 National Biodefense Strategy and signed a National Security Presidential Memorandum. Together, they will improve the federal government's readiness and response to man-made and natural biological threats to health and safety. The strategy was mandated by Congress and has five extensively detailed goals. 
It establishes a new cabinet-level committee chaired by the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. National Security Advisor John Bolton said, "...the Biodefense Steering Committee will monitor and coordinate implementation of the National Biodefense Strategy across 15 federal agencies and the intelligence community." The Blue Ribbon Study Panel on Biodefense commended the Trump administration for creating the strategy because it's an action that the panel prioritized in the National Blueprint for Biodefense. <laughs> <laughs> Identified problems The BRSPB report said that there existed almost no urgency within the federal government for dealing with the risk of a biological event. The report stated that the government does not appear to take events related to biological safety seriously enough. One member stated, The tragic saga of the death of Thomas Eric Duncan from Ebola virus disease EVD serves as a perfect demonstration of the shambolic state of biodefense in the United States in late 2014." Another estimated that the consequences of inaction on BRSPB's recommendations would be that the report would serve as a «guidebook for placing blame». Another issue is the federal government's failure to update its practices and procedures as they relate to biological threats. For example, there is a system within the National Institutes of Health and Food and Drug Administration that would fast-track the approval of medical countermeasures in the event of a biological attack. However, Tom Ridge told a Senate committee during a hearing that the fast-track process is obsolete. Page 52 of the report reads, "...a systemic, risk-averse culture has emerged that is stifling innovation. If this continues to evolve, progress on biodefense objectives will be curtained and the still nascent biodefense industry will have little incentive to participate." Another example is the practice of stockpiling vaccines against a biological agent. This practice is now considered obsolete, the BRSPB opined. Terrorist organizations are already able to «merge the toxic attributes of more than one agent» to replace vaccine stockpiles, BRSPB recommended a «vaccines on demand» approach. Biological <inaudible> <inaudible> attribution. <inaudible> The panel held a hearing on October 3, 2017 about the threats, challenges and solutions to an issue known as biological attribution, which refers to the process of determining who was responsible for a biological attack. Perpetrators could be criminals, terrorists, or state actors. The panel used the hearing, which included expert witnesses, to learn about the federal government's existing capabilities to figure out the sources of deadly pathogens and what those pathogens are. In fiscal year 2013, the NBFAC supported more than 45 investigations of potential biological crimes. Topic: <laughs> Budgeting. In its February 2018 report called Budget Reform for Biodefense, Integrated Budget Needed to Increase Return on Investment, the panel concluded that with threats to the U.S. and its interests overseas going up, the U.S. government can no longer wait to commit federal funds to biodefense. Waiting is not in the best interest of the health of Americans nor the country's national security. The panel submitted its report to Congress. One of the key budgeting issues is that there are too many separate agencies working on biodefense, and not enough coordination. The Office of Management and Budget, OMB, Chairman Joe Lieberman said, doesn't know how much the federal government spends on biodefense because the sad fact is, more than two dozen agencies are working in silos across biodefense, that increases our vulnerabilities. 
once we have a strategy and match that strategy with budget reforms that's the beginning of a much more effective biodefense national strategy." Economic impacts of a catastrophic outbreak could reach $1 trillion, Lieberman noted. The report recommends that the OMB each year submit, "...an integrated budget request to Congress that outlines federal-wide biodefense spending, and how it is tied to mission objectives." The report also asks Congress to create a bipartisan, bicameral biodefense working group to come up with budgeting solutions. <laughs> <laughs> Large-scale national preparedness In order to respond effectively during a large-scale biological event such as a terrorist attack or natural disaster, public and private organizations need to coordinate, experts on the panel agreed during a January 2018 hearing. However, obstacles exist that highlight the nation's vulnerabilities to such an event, hosted by panel members Donna Shalala, former Secretary of Health and Human Services, and former U.S. Rep. Jim Greenwood, officials concluded that a comprehensive public health system that is able to respond before a true biological disaster strikes is critical. The panel released an important report in 2015 called a national blueprint for biodefense, leadership and major reform needed to optimize efforts." The report showed the gaps in the United States' capabilities to respond to a biological event and recommended changes to U.S. biodefense policies. In an op ed in the Miami Herald on January 15, 2018, Shalala wrote that during a large biological event, I know that the federal government would move resources to affected areas throughout the United States. But those resources are already too few, and the federal government does not respond quickly to multiple locations in distress. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> National Disaster Health Care System. A stratified biodefense hospital system would provide the United States with a protective shield in the event the country experiences a man-made or natural biological catastrophe." Panelists told members of the Blue Ribbon Study Panel on Biodefense in a January 2018 public meeting, according to Homeland Preparedness News. The hospital system was one suggestion that panelists asked the study panel to take to Congress to act upon. The public hearing occurred during the same week that the U.S. Senate began holding hearings on the Pandemic and All Hazards Preparedness Act which is due for reauthorization in September 2018. Sharing across state, local, tribal, and territorial SLTT governments was another large theme during the public meeting. In its December 2016 Biodefense Indicators report, the study panel recommended that the White House redouble its efforts to share information with SLTT governments and listed specific action points for how to do so. Topic. Recommendations The National Blueprint for Biodefense, laid out a series of recommendations and associated action items. The primary changes the U.S. government should take, according to the panel's report, are the following one of BRSPB's major recommendations was to place responsibility of biodefense leadership into the hands of the Office of the Vice President of the United States. By doing so, biodefense would have the ear of the President and the ability to coordinate budgets and plans across agencies. In such a scenario, the White House Biodefense Coordination Council would execute the day-to-day -day work, Senator Lieberman said during testimony in front of the House Homeland Security Committee. 
by placing responsibility for biodefense in the hands of the Vice President's office, it would transcend the bureaucratic and budgetary rivalries of various agencies in order to create an effective platform for dealing with biological attacks." The report also suggested that the government merge duplicate processes by including all biological threats, not just those from terrorism, into a national strategy. For example, the «One Health Approach» is one recommendation made by BRSPB that would merge strategies for dealing with human and animal health biodefense programs. The Blue Ribbon Study Panel on Biodefense also called for the new innovation funds at the National Institutes of Health, and for 10% of those funds to be dedicated to building technology that would allow multiple antigens in a countermeasure to be delivered from a single platform. Similarly, BRSPB called for 10% of funds from the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority for the same purpose. Drive. George told Homeland Prep News that in order for the government's defense against a biological attack to be sufficient, a new comprehensive program needs to be developed. The programs and activities under a new approach would need to be coordinated, collaborative and innovative." The report recommends that all types of biological threats should be included in a single, command and control strategy. By different types, they meant biological warfare, bioterrorism, pandemic illness, and accidental release. Other reports Since the release of its National Blueprint for Biodefense, the panel has released three other reports, Biodefense Indicators, One Year Later, Events Outpacing Federal Efforts to Defend the Nation December 2016, Defense of Animal Agriculture October 2017, and Budget Reform for Biodefense, Integrated Budget Needed to Increase Return on Investment. The BRSBP published a report called holding the line on biodefense, state, local, tribal, and territorial reinforcements needed." In October 2018. The study makes eight recommendations to improve the U.S. biodefense system. One of the recommendations is to distribute funds to various levels of government before, not after, a biological event, in order to emphasize preparedness. Lieberman said that a major bioterrorism attack is imminent. Scott Lillybridge was the founding director of the Bioterrorism Preparedness Program at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. He was appointed in 1999 under President Bill Clinton. He experienced the 2001 anthrax attacks firsthand. The program was the first of its kind in the U.S. According to a news interview, Lillybridge, "...didn't realize then what would emerge as the almost surreal scope of bio-threats now challenging the United States." In October 2018, he testified before the BRSPB, saying that he thinks the government has not done enough with the private sector, academia, and other stakeholders to effectively prepare for a bioterrorism event. <laughs> <laughs> Activities The panel's activities include research, discussion meetings, issuing a report, and testifying before Congress. The group held four meetings in which it discussed the current status of the country's biodefense efforts. Drive. George said that for 2016, BRSPB would focus its efforts on staying engaged with Congress to help it understand and make the improvements that the BRSPB report outlined. Additionally, BRSPB teamed up with the Alliance for Biosecurity and Trust for America Health to conduct a survey of Americans' thoughts about biosecurity. 
According to the Alliance for Biosecurity, Americans are concerned about biological threats. In September 2016, the Open Philanthropy Project granted the panel a $1.3 million grant in support of the panel's influential leadership role in the evaluation of the nation's biodefense systems. Tom Ridge said, it is troubling that we still do not have a comprehensive approach to preparing for and responding to biological events. That is why this grant from Open Philanthropy is so critical. It will allow us to push forward the recommendations detailed in our national blueprint and seek to put them into action." In December 2018, President Trump signed the Agricultural Improvement Act of 2018 HR2, also known as the Farm Bill. The legislation included proposals recommended by the BRSPB to defend the American food and agriculture industry from biological attacks and disease outbreaks. For example, the new law creates a National Animal Disease Preparedness and Response Program and a National Animal Vaccine and Veterinary Counter Measures Bank. Additionally, it raises federal funding for stockpiling medical countermeasures for animals. Topic: See also 9/11 Commission Biological hazard Bioterrorism Blue Ribbon Panel Terrorism United States Biological Defense Program United States Department of Homeland Security <laughs>